Hi, everyone. Welcome to another Clean Machine Live. I'm Jeff Palmer, CEO and founder of Clean Machine. I have a special guest today here. Maxim, welcome from Los Angeles, and uh, great to have you. Before we get started, as always, I'll read the introduction, but also please know that this information is for informational and educational purposes only. It's not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Uh, Maxime and myself are here to give good, valuable information and is not meant to uh, replace any advice from a professional, a practitioner, or a doctor. So Maxime, Maxim is an entrepreneur, an Ironman, and Spartan athlete, and is the founder of Fit Vegan Coaching, a company dedicated to helping individuals adopt a healthier lifestyle through plant-based nutrition and exercise. Maxim has helped over 600 vegans successfully trans transition to a healthier way of living. Uh, he owns several fitness businesses, but he's on a special mission, a mission to help 1 million people with plant-based fitness and nutrition by the year in 2050. That's an aggressive <laughs> ambition. Um, so yes. first, let's start. Let's back up a little bit. And welcome from LA. First, how long have you been vegan and um, a trainer? And and what started your journey? Yeah, of course. Well, first of all, thank you very much for for having me, Jeff. Pleasure to meet everyone that is tuning in live. Um, so I've been vegan for over nine years now. Um, I've been a trainer for uh, at least over six years. Um, and then going online full time for for three full uh, three plus years now at this point. And what started all my, my, my whole journey is I'll backtrack a little bit. Um, very similar to kind of Robert Cheek, which is a, a, a friend that we have in common. I grew up on a farm. You know, we had we had chickens, we had cows, we had geese, we had horses. We lived the full on, you know, I say this respectfully, the redneck <laughs> type of life. Right. We had the red pickup truck and all that. So, you know, we were the farmers that we we killed our own chicken for me. We had our own eggs for me. Like we just everything from the lane ultimately. So I didn't I wasn't near the environment of becoming vegan. My dad actually used to make funds of vegan for eating blocks of plastic, which is now, you know, tofu, which is really good now. Um, so I didn't grow up with, uh, you know, the enticement to want to be vegan. But one day, uh, you know, I was uh, I was bodybuilding. So I was like 240 pounds. I was a lot bigger than I am today. I was training with a friend and that friend was my ride for the gym. And so he was giving me a ride back home. He's like, I just need to stop by my friend's apartment before I drop you off. I'm like, that sounds great. We stopped by the friend's apartment, opens the door and there's a runway inside the apartment. So like a runway for like high fashion modeling, right? Which people walk on. And I was like, what kind of friend do you have here? I was like, well, this is my modeling agent. And so, you know, I, he introduced me to her and she was like, you know what? I see something under your big chubby cheeks, right? I was like 240 pounds. I was full on bulking at that point. She's like, I see something on those, those big chubby cheeks. Like, you should try losing some weight, do a photo shoot and see how it goes. <laughs> and so I was prepping for uh, WFEB um, for fitness modeling competition. I was like, well, I'm going to lean out. Might as well kind of, you know, do a photo shoot while I'm there. So I did my first, first photo shoot, went well, booked some jobs, made some money. And I was like, well, this is great. I, mean, I can make money with people taking photos of me. I like never thought that was an option before. I come from, you need to work manual labor, you need to work construction, kind of do all these things. And so she told me, like, if you want to make money in this space and work, you need to be a lot smaller. And I was like an extra large for my shirts. And she's like, you need to be like a medium, like a small, <laughs> medium sized shirt. So I went on Google. I was like, what diet's going to allow me to get this skinny uh, as fast as possible? And like vegans are skinny and weak. I was like, I don't care if I, I'm weak. I just need to be skinny so I can fit in the darn clothes. <laughs> so ultimately, I went vegan the next day, right? I was eating a dozen eggs for breakfast, three chicken breasts every two to three hours for five meals a day. So I was eating like a farm of cool. chicken every day. The typical bro bodybuilding kind of approach to nutrition. The next day, I my breakfast was a bowl of frozen blueberries, bananas, and dates, right? I just nice. immediately made the transition. That was over nine years ago. Um, the point was for me to lose muscle because I was too big for the clothes. So I purposely did everything I could to lose as much muscle as possible. And I do want to say now, nine years in, like you can build muscle and be strong as a vegan, right? The weak part wasn't true. I just needed to get skinny. So that's what kickstarted kind of all of it. And I watched Forks Over Knife and it opened my eyes into the connection between disease and nutrition. And it was around that time that my grandfather got diagnosed with cancer. Uh, and then when we got noise diagnosed with cancer, I was like, well, he's been eating this way. He's been living this way. I was like, it kind of makes sense to me why he got sick. 
And then I became like a hardcore activist, which I think everyone has this initial phase when they go vegan, like you're the savior, you're trying to save everyone around you that you love. And so, you know, unfortunately, my grandfather ended up passing away, but that really kind of sealed it for me of like, there's a connection between how he was eating, how he was living and why he got sick. And so I continue with veganism. And I think like a few years after I meet my ex partner, within three months of us dating, she gets diagnosed with breast cancer. And then I chose to stay and be her caregiver. And she wasn't vegan before. And so she transitioned to eating whole food plant based with me because that's how I was I was eating before. Um, and then immediately her inflammatory markers kind of went down, you know, the tumor started shrinking, the doctors gave her one year to live after she got diagnosed, she ended wow. up living almost five years with I might say like a pretty good quality of life in comparison to other cancer patients, I kind of got sick throughout the process while she was sick, it's a pretty good quality of life. And unfortunately, she ended up passing away over two years ago. But after she passed away and having seen what it's like 24 seven for someone to lose their health, because at first, you know, we always have a family member that got sick with cancer and we know that it's terrible, but we're not there 24 seven by their side, having to deal with every need, driving to cancer treatments, paying for them, waking up to screams in the middle of the night. Like we don't experience that when it's someone that's close that we're not living with. And so having experienced that, I saw firsthand what it was like to lose your health. And I really didn't want other people to have to go through that. And to me, it just made sense. If you eat a whole food plant-based lifestyle, if you are moderately active, you stay at a healthy body weight. I'm not saying having a six pack or any of these things, if you're just healthy, you're moving your body, you're eating properly. You can greatly reduce your risk of dealing with these chronic illnesses. Because once you do get sick, the only thing that matters is not the body, is not the money, is not the house, is getting that health back. You would give all of it away just to get the health back. And I again got to experience that and see that. And so then I embarked on this mission. And the 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 smaller mission before the million, because the million is a big one, but it's helped 10,000 people get lean, thrive, and disease-proof their bodies on plants by 2033, which is going to be the age that my ex-partner was when she passed away. She was a few years older than me, like 12 years older than me. So she passed away at 39. So by the time it's 20 to 33, I will be her age. And I want to, in her honor, train, help 10,000 people reduce their risk. And then the next big goal is a million after, because I know that I will want to help more people ultimately. So that's my, well, my story in a nutshell. <laughs> and, and that's a powerful story. So thank you for sharing me. And I'm, I'm sorry for your losses. Um, Thank you. Uh, it can be a powerful motivation, though, to want to help others when going through that kind of suffering personally. Um, yeah. No one wants to suffer. And then when we see the amount of suffering that not only goes in to what we're eating just out of our own ignorance, but the destruction that happens to our environment and to the animals as well, it really compounds this like, wow, there's so much good that can be done just by helping people understand what they're doing when they choose the foods they choose, when they choose to exercise or not, how different their life can be and how different that impact on other people. I know mm -hmm. the people that pass aren't, aren't literally here with us, but I know from my own experience after losing my mother and father and both brothers, already and i'm just 60 years of age you know that you know this was they exited my life way too early and what could have happened if they made different choices i would love to have them here that's why i do what i do and i can see your passion now because it hit home for you personally but it's it's harder when people haven't been exposed on you know fortunately and um to those things but i don't want to see people wait till they have to look at death right in the face till they have to feel yeah. the heartbreak of a loss like that that is something that is truly you know changeable um yeah, there's nothing that's at 100 percent. not even a plant-based diet and exercise you can live a perfect life and get hit by train yeah. You know that, but it's just if you if you're going to have to play Russian roulette with life, how many bullets do you want in the gun? <laughs> you know, <laughs> the less yeah. the better. Yeah, um, I, I I use the analogy of a of a seatbelt, right? It's if you're driving or get in a car accident, you're less likely to die with a seatbelt. That's how I see an active lifestyle and whole food plant based eating as the role right. that it plays, right? Less likely to die, but nothing's guaranteed in life ultimately. But you want the chances on your side. 
Right, and it's not just death because for some people, a heart attack it's ends within seconds. It's yeah. it's you know in some ways even worse when you suffer for 10, 20, or even 30 years with disease states and medications and hospitalizations and losing all the income that you've worked so hard for in your entire life just to pay bills. Yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be that path. So let's let's talk about how you are getting this done. I know you've developed a 21-day fit vegan challenge. Talk about that a little bit and why the 21-day, why that approach? Yeah, of course. So it's actually funny. This is I only do the 21 day challenge once a year. And it's like this time of the year. And today's actually the last day to sign up. The cutoff is at midnight tonight. It's kind of perfect. So typically, I don't run challenges because I'm more after like long term sustainable changes. But what I notice is some people sometimes just need a little taste test, you know, of what it's like to do the more sustainable change. And so people say it takes about like, you know, 20 ish days to kind of change your habits. So that's why we made the program 21 days ultimately. So you can start building some of these new habits. And I just frame it as a Kickstarter where, you know, you get access to whole food plant based meal plan, you get a training plan, you get accountability, you get support just to get you started on your transformation. But ultimately, a lot of the people that we work with want to lose, you know, 20, 30, 40, 80, 100 pounds. A lot of people that we work with are dealing with, you know, Crohn's disease, celiac, PCOS, hypothyroidism, they're recovering from cancer. Like we, if we very rarely work with someone that has no physical or, or, or medical issue ultimately, but it's just an opportunity for people to, to have a taste test of what it's like to eat whole food plant-based properly in a way to shift your body composition, taste test of what it's like to train sustainably. Because so many people say as humans, we think that the harder is better, more is better. And we'll go do things like P90X when we haven't worked out in five years. And then we just crush ourselves. We're so sore we can't move for a week and then we can't continue to have progression. So just wanted to give an opportunity for people to, you know, ease into it ultimately. Um, so I've got a question from someone. Does your, your program include cooked food or is it all raw? Is it vegan only or do you work with people with different varied types of uh, changes? Yeah, great question. So I don't do raw vegan in the nutrition simply because the big aspect of what we do is sustainability from a social standpoint for the rest of your life like it's pretty it's harder to deal with social events date nights family gatherings and kind of all of these things and there's a lot of studies showing that you know some cooked foods is good for you right i wouldn't eat raw quinoa so there are certain foods that you want to, to have cooked for in terms of your health so it's there is cooked food there is raw foods as well it's a mixture of everything it is whole food plant-based there's no fake meat fake cheese fake chicken or any fake pro uh, vegan products in there because you want to keep it whole food you want to give your body what it's supposed to have ultimately um and in terms of what was the other question for the nutrition um oh it, are the people that are coming to you are they coming to you mostly already vegan vegetarian cu veg curious or not at all yeah, for sure. So I think for the first like two and a half years of me doing this, I only worked with vegans. And then I kind of had this revelation of like, well, I don't need vegan. I need I don't need vegans to be more vegan. I need more people to eat more plant based. So then we opened up the program to people that want to transition transition or simply eat more plant based. Right. So some people that want to come in is like, I want to eat 80 percent plant based. I'm like, that's a huge win. Like, we'll help you with that. So it's to help people transition that want to eat more plant based or that are already vegan, but actually want to learn to fuel themselves properly. In in the people that you work with are I, I noticed like on LinkedIn you you uh, reach out directly to CEOs and founders of companies and people high up because they can be in great positions of influence. Obviously, if they get a lot of people working under them and people see them eating differently or exercising or even dropping the weight, that can be a big influence. Do you yeah. do you work uh, do you target specifically people influence and you know, we had a nice conversation about men, meat, and masculinity. Do yeah. you find it more difficult to to work with men in general, uh, or what is your demographic like of the people that you do coach? Yeah, for sure. So the, to answer the first questions, we do. I do love working with entrepreneurs simply because we, have, we do have a similar mindset in terms of like how we approach things. It's very methodical and strategic, and usually they're type A. So I'm really used to pulling people back versus having to motivate people to work out. It's like they're already doing a lot, so it's about like how can we be more efficient with what they're doing on their plate. In terms of people's influence, I love working with women, and I, I don't want to be 
stereotypical, but I think it's just a fact that most women will be the ones cooking in the household. Men tend to be a little bit lazier when it comes to cooking. Mm -hmm. And so women have so much more impact on the family. If they are going whole food plant-based and they are cooking the food, their kids are more likely to eat more plant-based foods. Their husband are more likely to, hold, uh, to eat more plant-based foods because again, just simply lazier <laughs> to cook the food, to be honest. So there's a, there's a greater impact um, in, in that regards. I would say typically the people we work with are would be 70% women, 30% men, ranging from 40 years old to kind of 80 years old, simply because there's a bigger awareness of the importance of health, right? When you're 20s and 30s, people think they're invincible and they can live forever. So don't really look into that until, you know, there's a little bit of pain then that forces them to focus on health. So yeah, 70% women, 30% men women tend to be more receptive to eating more plant-based. And like you said, and like we recorded on our podcast, Vegan Masculinity, men have a little bit of a harder time to detach themselves from the idea of eating meats to eating plant-based because there is a, you know, a macho component attached to like eating a steak or eating a chicken for sure. Awesome. Um, so, all right, on, on that note, um, it, Obviously, a lot of people will get into or, or, or approach you saying, hey, you look great. I want to look great. So mm -hmm. I'm guessing that a lot of people since what now 77 percent of the American population is overweight or obese, that fat loss is probably number one or at the top of their list, at least. And yeah. talk about that, because I know a lot of people will get into it health for health reasons initially, but the more yeah. they get into it, they see how, what a broad impact on their health and they start reading more on social media, then the environmental, the animal, the ethical, all the rest of the things seem to start creeping in, but it just takes that significant first step. And I'm guessing that fat loss is probably right up there on the top of the list. Yeah, of course. It, you know, and I say this in a nice way because I think we all have that. There's a bit of a superficial aspect that we're kind of seeking um, for ourselves when it comes to looking a certain way because we associate confidence and comfort with what we see in the mirror or kind of how we fit with our clothes. So it's definitely the first point of contact, but that is not what we put the biggest emphasis in once people are in the program. So it is the fact that I am that I am fit is definitely a point that people are like, I want to work with this guy. But mm -hmm. I, I saw something online the other day and I just have to put it out there because I thought it was so funny and I actually have proof to back this up. Someone put, don't listen to a coach that's in like their 20s because when you were in your <laughs> 20s, it was easy to be fit. Talk to me when you're 40, right? So right. listen, I'll be honest, I'm turning 30 this month, right? <laughs> so don't, don't look at me, look at my track record. We have over 650 plus right. successful transformation ranging from the age of 20 to 80 years old. So we know it works regardless of the age group, right? Don't just look at me because it's a cheat code because I'm turning 30, right? I get it. It's easy for me to be fit, but well, you know. And, and my group, well, my group knows. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> this is 60 year old. So any age and it's never too late. I, I hear that from a lot of people. Oh, oh I'm over yeah. 50. It's too late to make any changes or whatever. It, it's never too late. And it may be a lifesaver for you if you do. So, uh, sure. it, you know. It's funny that people will work so hard to get to retirement and then die. <laughs> yeah, know? it's like they, save they, up all this money, build a house. Now you have equity in your home or it's paid off. You finally get to live the good life and go travel and you die. So, you know, it's even more important as you get up in age to get ready to enjoy the back half of your life, to do it healthy, not from the from medical bed and not mm -hmm. full of uh, pharmaceuticals keeping you upright, you know, to live a healthy life and enjoy the money that you've hard earned to, to, to get into retirement for. And so you don't have to force that on your kids or your other family members of, of the burden yeah. of, of, of patient care. Yeah. So, we, we, so we I know. Oh, oh, sorry. oh go, ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. I was gonna say. So we had a member Anne who, um, sixty-one, cancer survivor, had surgeries on both of her knees, mm -hmm. and the doctors again have a hard time walking. Ultimately, uh, lost over fifty pounds. Is hiking now. Is feeling vibrant. Has more energy. Thor, who's seventy-one, who lost over like thirty plus pounds, feels like a young man again. That's a great name with Thor. You have to be in shape, you know. <laughs> right. um, so yeah, age is age is just a number ultimately, right? Like obviously, 
you know, the body's going to feel differently when you're exercising at 70 versus when you're 20. It, yeah. It's normal, right? But it doesn't make it impossible. There's no transformation that's impossible in my book. Because listen, there's people with no legs and no arms that are in great shape. Mm -hmm. So you, you got you got four limbs. You're a healthy individual. You're able to listen to this podcast episode or to this video. You're going to be able to exercise and eat some healthy food, right? So it's always possible for everyone. Awesome. So I know you, you do, obviously, thank you for having me on your podcast, but you do podcasts. Tell me some of the interesting podcasts uh, that you've had uh, and some of the people that you've interviewed and um, what are some of the um, interesting people that you'd still like to interview? So talk about yeah. your podcast. Well, definitely our episode was a, it was a huge one, Vegan Masculinity. Um, <laughs> I Like I told you, once we we're done recording, I'm like, this will be as a part of my toolbox. Anytime someone says something about protein or veganism or building muscle, whatever it may be, I think it was the most comprehensive podcast I've ever done on that specific topic. So definitely that episode. You guys need to listen to that one. Um, you know, I, I had the pleasure of interviewing amazing people again, like yourself, Dr. Gregor, Dr. Clapper, Simon Hill, Dr. Matthew Nagra, Robert Sheik, Matt Frazier, um, just a ton of, ton of amazing guests. And ultimately, a lot of them are kind of backing the same thing, right? People talk trash about soy and all of them are very pro soy and the benefits that they have for your health everyone's talking about how to balance your fats for your hormones the hapa uh, epa all of these things so everyone's kind of saying the same things but just with the backing of their story so to me it's just really you know comforting and also from a, a listener standpoint like you listen to all these health experts they're all saying the same thing but they're all coming from different backgrounds they're all looking at different studies they'll have a different story right and so it's just i think that as it progresses, the movement will gain more momentum. And then eventually it just takes repetition, right? You need to hear something a hundred times before it clicks. So I think that's kind of what's going to happen over the years as I continue to record with more people and as more studies show show up and come out to kind of justify the things that we've been saying for years. And, and I'm glad that we finally have some studies now, um, which has only been in the last 10 to 20 years that, that actually are inclusive of looking at vegans. And, yeah. and those on a plant pure diet, especially a whole food plant based diet, where we're seeing even a better results um, by just not being not only plant based, but whole food plant based. Um, it's it's great to have that information that really validates what we've been saying and get it out of the opinion <laughs> uh, category and into the here's here's the research and now pass it up. I know we get uh, we get hit with, hey, wait a minute, that's only one or two studies. Well, this is because that's all that's available. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they've only started looking at vegans still uh, recently. So it's not cherry picking. It's just that that's the only cherries on the tree. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We, we do what we have for now until more comes out. Exactly. Oh, and speaking of uh, researchers and doctors, uh, a good friend of mine, Dr. Herbivore, um, mm. Lee is asking, what do you say to people who say that uh, you are so healthy because of the cycling and you could eat whatever you want? He's a cyclist, an avid cyclist yeah, yeah. and stays lean all the time, which makes you more healthy, the plant-based diet or the exercise? Uh, great question. Um, the first answer would be a combination of both, right? Because right. a lot of people focus a lot on body composition, which is great. But if your heart gives out, you still die, right? So exercising your heart is extremely important. So the cycling component, it, it, I think, is vital. But the plant-based diet also, I think, is what's going to add even more longevity to your health and help kind of increase that quality of life. So first of all, it would be the combination of both of them. If you, like, really had to choose, like, worst case scenario, plant-based diet first and cycling second, ultimately. Because the nutrition is going to save your life a lot more than the cycling, right? The cycling is going to add to it, ultimately, right? Yeah, I read a recent study really cool on a whole food plant based diet, um, uh, reducing risk of cancer by about 40%. And that uh, the um, uh, exercise uh, reduced it to about 30%. So mm -hmm. I was like, Oh, wow. But then when they put the two groups together, exercise is like 61%. So there was a cumulative benefit, not just a overlapping benefit. That combining a plant-based uh, nutrition and fitness will get you the best results overall. But yes, yeah. I agree. Uh, exercise, if you're exercising rapidly and burning up sugars like crazy, yeah, you could throw a down a vegan donut and it probably wouldn't affect you the same way as somebody who's sedentary. No doubt yeah. about it. Just because your metabolism is different. 
it doesn't give you the excuse that you should make a junk food diet just because you exercise because there's still going to be some negative attributes to the food yeah um, which there's the, a lot of that in ginger and space because i was yes. like i have my bike here you guys can see on the screen but i have my my bike here i used to do iron man and triathlon like there's a lot of that in that space yeah. you bike for a long time you go to a coffee shop you got an espresso a few donuts and cookies and then you bike to the <laughs> yeah. next coffee shop and you drink a beer and you have some food and so yes there's a lot of that in that world <laughs> yeah well and it's the plants with all these polyphenols the rich fiber sources the phytonutrients all these things that are in there that we're just still learning about and, and how our microbiome transforms some of the polyphenols into other chemicals like urolithin A that, it, that helps us utilize sugars, uh, helps it steer to more muscle growth and stuff like this. So there's a whole cascade of events that are going on when we eat plants in their whole state that you can't get um, other than your macro calories, your carbs, your fats, your, your um, protein. Other than yeah. that, those other things really help metabolism. I was just reading an interesting study today that uh, had isocaloric. They have the two groups eating the exact same amount of calories at a 500 calorie deficit. Yeah. The exact same amount of calories. It's, you know, everybody says calories in, calories out. No, 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 no. The type of calories and what that calorie is packaged with makes a big difference. So yeah. the whole food plant-based in the exact same amount of calories as the other group, the whole food plant-based lost more body fat, lost more waist circumference, had better uh, lower uh, LDL cholesterol, uh, had better overall uh, uh, inflammatory markers. There's so much more going on there. And they actually had better glucose uh, removal from the system. So even mm -hmm. though the glucose was, was, uh, higher in the other group, it was, uh, um, higher in the carbohydrate group, the plant-based group, even though it was higher, they were better and more efficient at actually using that carbohydrate. So it's not just, oh, there's a lot of sugar in fruit that's going to make you fat. No, there's the rich polyphenols in fruit that actually help the body utilize this even better. And we remove the fat from those muscle cells, you're going to get even better utilization of that. So there's a big difference. Great study on glycemic index even showed that the glycemic index was measured on the food, not on what actually happens in the body. Because when they look yeah. at the blood glucose spike, is it a spike because of quickly released and, 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 and utilized sugars? Or is it a blood spike because there's a backup of fat in the cells with that sugar nowhere to go because it can't get into the cells now that's a yeah. dangerous blood spike in sugar whereas a blood spike in sugar from carbs when there's no fat in the cells gets soaked up right into the cells very fast so it's cleared so it's not just how much it raises blood sugar it's how much that blood sugar gets out of the system if that blood sugar hangs out in the system because you got a bunch of fat in your muscle cells and it can't get in that's type 2 diabetes that's yeah. age creation that's when it becomes toxic to the eyes and and to the limbs and things like this this is where the danger comes from so we've been using this marker a spike in blood sugar as oh, that's negative well no it's only negative if it doesn't go anywhere <laughs> and that's why exercise can increase the utilization and a plant-based diet with all its polyphenols can help the body uptake that by maintaining a lower fat. So um, yeah. I know you talk about this with, with some of your patients or, or clients or coaching pe the people that you coach. What is their response when they hear some of this? I know I get, well, why have we been lied to? Why does my doctor not tell me this? You know, do you get some of that? <laughs> Um, I would say not as much anymore, simply because a lot of people that come to us, they've seen, you know, what the health, the game changers, forks over mm -hmm. knife, and they kind of been on their own little journey by themselves, mm -hmm. um, where they've kind of done the research and they've had that epiphany moment. And then there's a little frustration part that comes after the epiphany moment. And then they're kind of coming back down and then they've tried things on their own and they haven't had too much mm -hmm. success. And then that's when they come to us. They're just looking for that optimization part to kind of go to the next level. So I, I will sometimes get new vegan. There's a gentleman named Caesar that just uh, joined two weeks ago. And he was like, I watched, what was it? I think it was what the hell. I watched what the health on Friday. I went vegan Saturday and I was on a call with him on, on Monday. He's like, I'm doing this right for the first time. I was like, you're an action taker, my man. Like that was like within two to three days. 
I don't get a lot of those people. Yeah, I don't get a lot of those people, but I was like, good for you, man. Like some people, it takes, you know, six months to a year before they kind of want to take that on properly. So mm -hmm. I, I don't get as much of it right now because they, they already see and know the benefits of it. And then they're mm -hmm. here because they want to do it properly, ultimately. That's that's awesome. Um, I, I'm just on a personal note. Uh, you've got a couple of businesses. Uh, talk about that. Talk about how people can reach you or get in touch with you, follow you on social. I know you do blogs. So, uh, you know, I'm sure people want to listen to your blogs, including the last two we did together, which I thought were awesome conversations. But he's got a whole host of like some of the guests you just mentioned, some of people i think very highly of so i'm envious of you and your conversations but how can people um find out about more about your website getting coaching from you your social media connections and uh, your blogs yeah of course well thank you um honestly just going to fitvegan.ca you will be able to find my YouTube channel, which a lot of our videos for the podcast get posted in a few additional videos. There's a link to my one of my podcasts called the Fit Vegan Podcast. There's a link to Instagram, Facebook. You know, we we try to serve people as much as we can. So we maybe put out maybe 200 pieces of content per month, um, you know, on recipes, education, whatever it may be. So it's a, it's a lot of content that we're putting out, but it's been really fun kind of creating all of that. Um, and to work with us, ultimately, just on fitvegan.ca, you have the ability to book a call directly with myself. I try to have all the calls with um, new members that come in because, you know, I'm looking for people that are actually ready to go to the next level. And some people, it's more of a, there's, an, there's still an internal debate. So I'm going to have a conversation because it is a pretty serious commitment in terms of time. Mm -hmm. I structured it to be the last program that people need to do. I always frame it in that there's two types of goal. There is a need goal and the want goal. So the need goal is like you feel that you need to lose 30 pounds to be in a position where you're comfortable in your body, you're mobile and you're feeling good. So once we got a handle on the need goal, then we have the one goal, which is some people want to do run a 10K, do a triathlon or whatever. I mean, it's the fun goal after. So mm -hmm. I framed it so that it's the last program people need to do to take care of the need goal. And then they don't have to worry about it because mm -hmm. we not only help them do it, but we teach them how to do it throughout the process. I'm trying, I'm trying to create self-sufficient people, Jeff, ultimately. I'm trying to create people that won't be reliant on me once they're done the program. I only want them to come back if they have a fun goal after, right? Mm -hmm. They want to do a triathlon. They don't have any knowledge in that. That's what we're here for, right? Mm -hmm. But I never want people to come back for fat loss because I want to educate them. So when we make a change in our training nutrition, we tell them why we did it. Here's the decision making that went into us making this decision so they can start to understand and be able to do it by themselves once they're done, ultimately. All right. I love that. And that is so honorable. And I wish the practitioners of the world, the doctors and the physicians of the world had that same goal. You know, it used to be Hippocrates, who uh, was vegetarian himself. Uh, the father of modern medicine said, uh, first, do no harm. And mm -hmm. I, I think that's got to be where we start, that it's a lifestyle. Um, he also uh, was famous for, for saying, uh, before you uh, find out if uh, before you help someone find out if they're willing to give up what what caused them to be sick because uh, if one. they're not if they're not you're not going to be any help to them at all so yeah. uh, that's where you, we all have to start you have to start with a willingness of wanting to change and please please <laughs> whether it's maxim or myself or whoever you're talking to don't wait till you get sick it may be too late by that time um yeah the and so much more effort to, to try to recover back to a new even to a neutral level after the people who love you your 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 spouse your kids if you have them your parents they want you here they want you healthy they when you suffer they suffer if they really truly care about you um don't let simple food choices and lack of exercise be the reason to create that kind of suffering here on this plane um yeah well okay. i i really love what you're doing that's why i'm i'm so excited to have you on this podcast and and why i want to share your information i do anything i can to help you and your goals so, i appreciate that yeah All right do you mind me adding a little something um no please do so a lot of people we work with tend to be type A caregivers that you know or love to put other people first. They'll put their kids first, they'll put friends first, they'll put family members first, and always going to put themselves second. Having seen what's on the flip side of losing your health firsthand, 
I'm here to tell you that it's not selfish for you to work out and take care of yourself. It's actually sell. It's actually selfish for you not to work out and eat properly. And here's why it's selfish for you to not take care of yourself, because for now you feel good. There's no health concerns. Your body's doing fine. You're feeling fine for now, but 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years into it, you get sick, right? Now your health, your health starts to decline. Now you have to spend more time on yourself. And sometimes you, not only you taking time by yourself, is not enough. Now other people have to assist you. Now your partner that loves you has to see you suffer and has to take care of you. Your kids have to see you suffer and they have to take care of you. So now they are forced to take care of you because you didn't take care of yourself throughout those previous years, right? So I want to share with you that it's not selfish for you to take care of, of yourself, right? It's selfish for you not to take care of yourself. So please, you don't have to do a lot. Three strength training sessions per week, right? Just modify the food choices that you're consuming. Just those two things are going to go a very long way. You don't need to train like an athlete. You don't need to eat like a, you know, a bodybuilder, like everything you read online. If you eat whole food, plant-based, eat good food for you. You move your body. That's going to go a very long way. So I just wanted to, to put that out there for people. Oh, perfectly said. I couldn't have said it any better. You and I are so aligned on our values and our mission. And it really is. I know in this society, modern society, we've become very polarized, you know, us and them. And you're right, I'm wrong. And in so many different ways, diet shouldn't be one of them. Um, mm -hmm. It's not about right or wrong. It's not about good or bad. It's about what knowing the truth of what happens when you consume food. Yes, there's a lot of misinformation out there, so it's very difficult to do that. But you and I come from backgrounds where health has really impacted our lives seriously. And um, we come from it from a heart space, from a space of really wanting to help and care for other people, from a space of wanting to reduce the amount of suffering in this world. So. I thank you so much for everything that you're doing. Thanks for coming on the show and sharing your message and your goals uh, and all your efforts um, uh, over the last 10 years. And thank you for letting that light bulb come on. So many uh, people resist that moment. Like, yeah, you know, it's true, but I don't want to give up all my friends, my workplace. I don't want to be difficult with my family and blah, blah, blah. And they cave and they cave to yeah. those pressures. So it's it's not easy. Um, I I lost a lot of friends <laughs> um, when I who just didn't want to be around me. Oh, it's too difficult. You eat, you have to eat at certain restaurants, you can only do this, and you know, blah blah blah. And it's it's tough. But I think that's part of living true to your own personal values, living your truth. There's nothing more powerful of an experience than that. Um, yeah. When you realize the truth of what the food choices are doing to your body and you can live by that truth, it's powerful. And it's it's the reason why we continue to share. So thank you. <laughs> uh, absolutely. You know, I, I went vegan when I was a bodybuilder and I was at a bodybuilder gym. All my friends were bodybuilders. So you can only imagine <laughs> the amount of nagging and comments I got from being the vegan amongst all my bodybuilding friends for several years. So <laughs> I get it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you so much. I, I look forward to uh, hearing some updates from you on uh, the successes that you had and love hearing the stories of people who are having life changing moments. Thank you for all you're doing and thank you for joining me today. Thank you for having me and looking forward to our workout this summer. <laughs> me too.